I've wanted to make a telephone central office simulator for years to be able to operate old phones or modems and have them call each other as if they were connected to a plain old telephone service. To make it easier to prototype on the breadboard, I made a series of modules including just a basic phone jack to pin header board so I can plug this into the breadboard and plug in a phone. Then I made a DTMF decoder where I can connect this to the phone line and if there's any key presses from 0 to 9 or star or pound, I can detect those. And then I discovered this phone line slick module, subscriber line interface circuit. So I made a breakout board for this where I can plug in a phone and use digital and analog pins to make the phone ring or to tell when the phone is off hook and to play audio into or get audio out of the phone line. So after a bunch of prototype testing with all of these modules and a telephone and using an audio amplifier to hear any sounds I'm generating, it was time to put all this onto a single PCB with today's sponsor, PCBWay. That slick module that controls the interactions directly with the phone is what really made this all possible. And on AliExpress, there's clones of an AG1170 or 1171 module, and these have model number KS0835F. These are very cheap, so I bought several of these for experimenting. And all you need to do is basically give it a regular digital logic power supply, and it handles interfacing with a phone line and generates ring voltages, provides a loop current, and you just hook up a microcontroller or some other discrete control circuit to run it. While hooking up all those separate modules, once I was satisfied that I could ring the phone or detect DTMF button presses, I figured it was time to start documenting it with a prototype schematic. As it turns out, I think I'm actually going to change a lot of this, so there are problems on here. I've detailed those along with a bunch of other schematic and sketch related details as I was developing this whole thing. I put those videos in a playlist, so if you want more details on how this all works, how the circuit blocks were gradually added to the system and how the sketch was evolving to control everything, you can go check that out. But for now, this design here works in prototyping on the workbench, but it does have some technical issues that I would not commit to a final design, although it is worth making a prototype because I can still work on software, get this thing running, and then fix it up in a final revision. Because on the workbench with all the separate modules and all of those DuPont wires, it just keeps having intermittent issues and it takes up to an hour every time to figure out what's wrong. So it's worth ordering a bunch of PCBs for $5 and then just putting the parts on, having a stable development platform, and later I can just desolder any of the more expensive parts and reuse them in the final product. And this is the system I'm looking to emulate where a local exchange or central office is where telephones in a local area can all be wired up between houses to the central office. And if one phone wants to call another phone locally, that can possibly be routed just with the one central office. But if you're calling a phone in a different geographical region, you're basically going to talk to your central office. That one is going to connect over a trunk line to another central office, which directly handles interactions with another phone. So I'm looking to have a PCB dedicated to each phone. So I'm going to really need two phones, two of these exact same PCBs, and then a trunk line going between them. So I can pick one phone up off hook, hear a dial tone generated by the central office, start dialing a number, and when a valid number is dialed, the central office will communicate with the other central office, find out if the local phone there is on or off hook, so you can complete your call, or just hear a busy signal. And if you complete the call, your final end-to-end -end connection path is made and the two phones can interact. To make the system more authentic and nostalgic, I also worked on generating call progress tones into the phone line from the central office. And these are sounds such as when you're making a call and you hear a busy signal, a dial tone, a ringing tone, or even the annoying off-hook tone when you just leave the phone off the hook too long and it starts making a noise. 
so you have to control playing certain combinations of frequencies, either continuously or certain on-off patterns, and those tones and the pattern of on and off, the cadence, can change between regions. So for now I implemented North American and UK call progress tones, and I did that with the Arduino Mozzie sound synthesis library, where I can generate multiple simultaneous tones, and then just control the pattern of playing or silencing it. One thing about the Mozzie audio generator, it's timing critical and you're not supposed to really do many other things in your main loop. So with the ESP8266 controlling everything, sometimes audio would stutter and I would have to change what I'm doing so that I can try to let it keep up. So that's one reason I may want to just switch over to an ESP32 if I can get Mozzie working on that or else find another generator. And then with two cores, maybe I can dedicate one core just for generating audio and the other core, maybe I can get wireless communication working and do something like use ESP Now to talk from one central office to the other. Because there's no way I can do wireless plus keeping up with all the audio timing. So for now, to talk between central office PCBs over a trunk line, I'm using a Max 485 serial interface. So when one phone wants to call the other phone, and the two central offices need to coordinate, they do it over 485, but maybe with an ESP32 I can do it over wireless. And when the two boards finally coordinate that they are going to let one phone talk to the other, I switch in this extra phone jack on both boards, and that's part of what I'm calling a trunk line between the boards. This audio path for the phone directly, and this digital path for the boards to communicate. All of this was reviewed in the other playlist schematic video, including talking about the design problems with this, so I'm just looking at it from a high level right now. Here's where the local phone is connected, so when somebody picks it up, the ESP generates a dial tone, the user presses buttons, those are detected from the audio path with a DTMF decoder, and the ESP can interpret that, and if it's time to place a call, talk to the other central office, find out if it's busy or able to ring, and connect the call when needed. So each central office has a dedicated phone here, and this green and blue wire along with this extra phone wire going between central offices. This is the trunk line, and over in the prototype we have the ESP, the GPIO expander, some of these phone jack breakout boards for breadboarding, the slick module, the DTMF decoder tapping into the phone line to listen for key presses, and an RS-485 module so that I'm going to plan to dial out from this central office, so this is locked in transmit mode, and the sketch over here has this RS-485 in receive mode, so when it's time, when I dial a valid number here, it's going to be communicated over to this office, and the phone is on hook, so it's going to ring, and when I answer it, this phone path will be connected between the offices, and the two phones can interact. I have to try to film a working demo before this janky half falls apart again. These are two identical functioning circuits, at least. This keeps failing to work because of obvious reasons, so knowing that I still need to work on this, I just thought it makes sense to get a stable platform and condense it down. So if I pick up this phone off hook, I should get a dial tone. I'll put it back on hook and wait for a call from this one. So here's hoping it didn't fall apart. Now the other one's ringing. The red light is blinking as well. So if I pick it up when it rings again, just to make sure. Okay, so the yellow light came on, so it's now off hook. And of course, I was trying to demo audio being sent from one phone to the other, but something went weird in the recording. So I'm going to quickly just get through that part if I can.
So I dialed from this one and now it's connected the call. Everything went weird again with this, so let me see. All right, okay, so. Okay, that's the best I can demo with this setup. Hopefully in the future when I upgrade all of this and don't have this kind of stuff going on, it'll go smoother. So since this is all kind of a prototype and it's going to be abandoned as far as ESP8266, over on GitHub I just kind of threw the project into an abyss and I can go and look at the current sketch, which is going to be the last one for the 8266 architecture. And most of this has already been reviewed in the other playlist. But just as an overview, here's the main sketch, which is going to be the same file name as the folder so that the Arduino IDE knows what to do. And then to keep it less cluttered, I dumped some functions into another INO file and it just automatically loads in the IDE, takes care of itself. And there's a few other files here for convenience, including I made this little, I don't know if it's a library. It's the first time I ever tried to do it. I'm sure I broke a lot of rules, but to use Mozzie to generate those call progress tones, I just made that into its own little class that I call from the main sketch. So in the main sketch, some things to be aware of to put this all to use. First, depending what kind of call progress and ring patterns I want, I can uncomment whether I want to be in North America or the UK on each system. And then I need to know what is a valid phone number that I can call when I pick up one phone and I want to contact the other phone at the other central office. So in the sketch when I'm detecting DTMF key presses, I'll check if the valid phone number has been entered and then complete the call if necessary. Then there's just all the variables and things that need to go on to control the slick and read the DTMF button presses. I have some system flags here so that throughout the sketch as the phone is on or off hook and it's ringing or not, I keep track of the state of the overall system. And then within other functions, I can just quickly see, am I on or off hook? Am I trying to ring or whatever else? And that helps me decide if I should disable or permit other operations. For example, if the phone is picked up off hook, you don't want to try to make it ring. And really then we just have the state machine, which is very sloppy and has known bugs. But I just put a few test functions here really so that I can tell when I pick up the phone, switch between different modes, do different things, and eventually go back to idle when the phone's on hook and we're waiting for another call, or for someone else to pick up the phone to make a call. So all of this is going to need to be debugged and sorted out and more states added when I switch it over to an ESP32. But for now, this is a big success, especially since I've wanted to do this for probably the past three years. And I still have further plans once I develop a new generation of the hardware. Maybe I can get a couple of modems talking to each other and see about revisiting BBSs, bulletin board systems. If you're interested in any of that and seeing how this project unfolds, stay tuned. And otherwise, check out the other playlist videos to see how this got from where it started in 2018 or 2019 to today.